with this file we will start understanding two another tools uh, which is quick selection and magic wand okay magic wand is there since the beginning when photoshop is there okay quick selection is something which has been introduced recently so for quick selection uh, first thing i'm going to show you is a magic wand tool which is hidden inside the quick selection tool okay uh, that's there Uh, the short key or hot key for that is W, and as I said, it's there in almost every single Photoshop uh, you might find. The beauty of this tool, it gives you similar options at the top, new, add, subtract, which it gives for almost every single selection tool, okay? Because selections are made for that. You're not going to get your selection in one shot. You have to do addition, subtractions to make it more precise and accurate, okay? So with this also, it's a new selection at first. Uh, but the use of this tool is sometimes when you want to select the part of the image which has a solid color, then it's easier to select that particular pixel of the image using Magic Wand. Because Magic Wand, in just one click, will select any area of your image which has a solid color in it or solid flat colors in it. Why I'm picking this tool for this particular example is you can see there's a jet fighter plane here. Okay. Now the task for us is to select the jet fighter and use it in some other graphics to create a banner. Right? But what would be easier to select the jet fighter? As you can see, its shape is so arbitrary. So will that be easy? Or in one click, select the solid color and then reverse your selection. So that will be the easier, is it? Because you can see the jet fighter. Look at the shape of the jet fighter. So like that, like that, and the tiny shapes in between. And then it's going like that. Then it's going like that. So it's quite difficult to uh, do the selections like that, right? But instead of selecting that, I'm going to select the rest of the area, which is this, right? And then we will simply inverse the selection. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna simply go back to these tools, select magic wand, okay, and if I just click anywhere on this solid color, do you see what happens? It simply goes and select all that solid colors present. Your moving ants or the marching ants are not only around the jet right now they are actually around the jet but in the rest of the canvas as well so if you just copy and paste right now what do you think the graphic will select right it will select the sky because that's a selection right now not the jet okay because again for our foundations basics everything inside the moving ants is the selection so your moving ends are here, as well as they are here. Means area between the border and here is your selection, which is this whole blue patch. Okay? But it is simple to do that, because now in one click, as we have selected the solid color patch, we can go back, and if I can go to the select menu, there is an inverse menu option there. So when you click on inverse, you see what happened? It leaves the solid color patch, which was selected, and it selects the jet. Right. But now, if I'll just do copy, control C, paste, control V, and hide the background layer, you got your jet fighter. So you can do whatever you want. You can make it small, use it in another graphic to create your posters. It's up to you. Okay. But I'm going to go back slightly, step backward. This is what happens when you don't work with zoom. Okay, I've clicked on the solid color, but now my marching ants are going inside these flights eject cover as well. Do so you see that? This shouldn't be the part of the image. This shouldn't be the part of the color. 
because the range of that patch and the blue sky is more or less similar, Magic Wand thinks that he's a part of the color as well, and it goes and still like that, which is not an ideal case. For this, there's a tool option comes to your rescue, which is at the top called Tolerance. By controlling the tolerance value, you can actually control to what amount of radius you can go and select the color. Lower the tolerance, lower range of color shades it will select. Higher the tolerance, it might think even the lighter shade of the blue is also the part of it. Okay, So there won't be any magic number which you can use for all your graphics. You have to do the trial and errors to find the correct tolerance value. Okay. For example, I don't know what will be. 32 is definitely not correct value. It's quite high because it is going into other blue area as well. So I'm going to lower the tolerance and redo the selection. If I go back to my tolerance values, so this selection definitely I don't want. Let me deselect it. And magic wand, new selection. Let's reduce the tolerance value to about 20. And now if I click on the blue sky, much better. If you can zoom in also, you can see it's not a high resolution image. That's why you still will have some AG, blurry edges to your selection, but because I'm using low resolution files to demonstrate. But there you go, it's quite nice. If you think that's with HE, you can again go and reduce 21, 19, try different values. But I'm going to go with this 20 for a while. Okay. Now the next step is you go back and do inverse. So you have your jet selected. Now I'm going to go back to the, let's say this pattern plan, right? Using crop tool, I'll make a simple selection here like that. Crop tool also, we saw the demonstration yesterday, so we all know. Okay, I've got a nice landscape of ocean and the sky. Okay, but if I go back to my tab of Jet Fighter, I'm going to copy my selection, change the tab to the image I want, right? And here, edit and paste. So I've got my Jet Fighter at these positions. Now to rearrange and resize your graphic, you can go to the edit, select free transformation, which is Control T quite useful it gives you the control across the whole graphic you have in this free transform at the top this W is for the width and H is for the height while you do scaling of your graphics don't scale randomly okay because it might look squashed it's good to constrain it so that aspect ratio will be maintained but to maintain your aspect ratio the best thing is there's a chain icon you can press on it which will lock your width and height. Okay. Now, with that option, you can simply go to your graphic, hold on to the any corner points. It will maintain the aspect. See, the width and height is going in constraint. You can select, enter to apply. You can use move tool because your graphic is on the separate layer. Rename your layer. Just click on this. Double click on the text of the layer, and make it whatever name you want. Keep this habit because in future when you have 50 60 layers you will get confused so it's very good to have renaming your layers okay i'm just naming it as a jet or a plane whatever i want right so that's my jet here the use of multi skills yesterday i've shown you cloning tool now here i don't want to see these military numbers on my jet so i'm going to use clone and clone this pixels around these numbers which is the body of the jet and I will paste it across those numbers so that you don't see the numbers at all okay so that's the use of cloning I might just duplicate this layer quickly Control J use the cloning tool that's too big reducing the brush size alt click the target paste it Alt, change the target. Reduce the brush if you want. Mm. 
you do it better I'm just doing it randomly but again same with the star so this is touches I'm giving using a clone tool that's your jet and then if you want you can use text tool whatever text you want Whatever you want. Done. Very simple. Using magic wand, this is what we have achieved. Okay. Let me stop the recording for a while.